subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Shivangi. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 6th of January. Omicron spreads in India, big cities, but hospitalization still slow. Pakistan's PDM chief terms PDI party of thieves, say no one can match PM Imran Khan in corruption. And no more fencing allowed in Durant line. Afghan Taliban warns Pakistan. And now for all the details. India witnessed a spike in coronavirus cases in metropolises like Delhi, Mumbai and Calcutta, with no significant rise in hospitalizations. However, experts fear the new Omicron variant could reach the rural areas. The country on Thursday reported 90,928 new cases making it the highest in more than six months. Indian mega cities Delhi, Mumbai and Kolkata are experiencing a surge in COVID-19 cases, although without a corresponding rise in hospitalizations. But fears are growing about a spread to rural areas in coming days. India reported 90,928 new Delhi COVID cases on Thursday, up nearly fourfold since the start of the year mostly from cities where health officials say the Omicron variant has overtaken Delta. The bulk of those infected have shown no or only mild symptoms and have recovered quickly at home, officials said. The Federal Health Ministry on Wednesday identified Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai and Bangalore as some of the main regions of concern, although state officials worry the disease will soon spread to the countryside where health facilities are weaker. Covid cases nearly doubled in a day in Delhi to 10,665 on Wednesday, but the state said only 7% of its Covid beds were occupied. This number of cases is increasing very rapidly. We have seen that uh, within two days the num uh, number is doubling. Uh, so I think this time uh, the number, daily number, if we uh, discuss the overall uh, number in the country, it may go just... Uh, double the what it was seen in the last wave. In the West, Mumbai recorded a new daily infection peak of 15,166 on Wednesday, well up to its previous high of just over 11,000 hit last year. Nearly 90% of new patients had shown no symptoms and only 8% were hospitalized, city officials said in a daily health bulletin. Lockdown was a minister of Nalagai, Joki, why Bepari Apna Desh called you Pilese Gata Chalrai or Bimari Konsabi Kavaga, who guarantee me Uske Barame publicly Darna Nichaye. Kolkata, a city of about 15 million, accounted for half of the new cases in the eastern state of West Bengal until a few days ago, but cases are now rising in neighboring districts. The state has reported one of the highest rates of infection in India. India has confirmed at least 2,135 Omicron cases and one death linked to the variant in an elderly man who was suffering from diabetes. Daily COVID deaths rose by 325 on Thursday, taking the total to 482,876. Total infections are at 35.11 million, only behind the US tally. At least six workers at a dyeing and printing mill in India were killed and around 20 were taken to hospital on Thursday after inhaling toxic gas caused by an illegal dump of waste chemicals. Six people were killed and 20 injured in a chemical leak incident in India's western Surat city on Thursday. The disaster took place in the industrial city of Surat in Gujarat state at around 4 a.m. The workers were in the mill when some chemicals were dumped nearby. Chemicals were being illegally discharged from a tanker into a rivulet close to the mill. Officers were investigating but had yet to make any arrests, said media reports. 
जो हमारे पास छः पेशेंट मृत हालत में लाए लाए गए और 20 पेशेंट जो है लाइव कंडीशन में लाए गए जो 20 पेशेंट है वो बीसों के 20 पेशेंट को हमने एडमिट किया है India suffered the world's worst industrial disaster in 1984 when methyl isocyanate gas leaked from a pesticide factory owned by American Union Carbide Corporation in the city of Bhopal killing more than 5000 people. Moving on to news from Pakistan, the Opposition Alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman on Wednesday termed Imran Khan's party Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaf a party of thieves and said that all politicians wrongdoing combined cannot reach the level of Khan's corruption. The chief of opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement Maulana Fazlur Rahman on Wednesday termed Prime Minister Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehreek-e-Insaf OPTI a party of thieves and said that all politicians wrongdoings combined cannot reach the level of Khan's corruption. Fazal made the statement after a report of the scrutiny committee of Fazal made the statement after a report of the Scrutiny Committee of Election Commission of Pakistan revealed that PTI had not disclosed funding worth over 310 millions of rupees. Addressing a press conference, Rahman lashed out at Prime Minister Imran Khan and said that the report had revealed everything about the ruling PTI. Whatever he had already predicted about Imran Khan is turning out to be true, Rahman said. के सारे सियासतदानों की करप्शन को इकट्ठा करके इमरान खान की करप्शन के 10 में 20 में हिस्से तक भी नहीं पहुंच सकती Meanwhile Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday said he welcomed the election committee of Pakistan scrutiny of the PTI's funding through donations from overseas Pakistanis He however urged ECP to scrutinize funding of opposition PMLN and PPP as well The Taliban has said it will not allow any more fencing on the Durant line that forms the Afghanistan Pakistan border and has warned Islamabad of repercussions. However, Pakistan's military spokesperson Major General Babar Iftikhar reaffirmed the fencing will continue, downplaying recent events of removal of fence and obstruction of the construction work by the Taliban fighters as localized issues. The Taliban has said it will not allow any more fencing on the Durant line that forms the Afghanistan Pakistan border. Maulvi Sanaullah Sangeen, commander of the Taliban's border forces, said on Wednesday, "Whatever they did before, they did, but we will not allow Pakistan to continue the fencing any time in any form," reported Afghanistan's Tolo News. Border fencing is a contentious issue between Pakistan and Afghanistan since it was started in 2017 to curb cross-border movements of terrorists and drug traffickers. The Taliban or the Islamic Emirate is also building over 30 outposts to prevent the movement of the Pakistan military alongside the Durand line. Reports suggest Pakistan's military spokesman Major General Babar Iftikhar however reaffirmed on Wednesday the resolve to complete fencing of the over 2000 km long border downplaying recent events of removal of fence and obstruction of the construction work by the Taliban fighters as localized issues aur apne border ke andar rehte hue Pakistan jo bhi iktamat kar raha hai wo jari rakhega aur un pe amal daramat hoga aur inshallah अफगान हुकूमत के साथ हमारे बहुत अच्छे ताल्लुक हैं और जहाँ पे कोई छोटी मोटी प्रॉब्लम्स आती हैं वो बड़े एमिकेबली रिजॉल्व हो जाती है अर्लियर दिस वीक पाकिस्तान फॉरन मिनिस्टर शाह महमूद कुरेशी हैज ऑल्सो सेट द फेंसिंग वुड कंटिन्यू एंड द इशू वुड बी डिस्कस्ड वाई आर डिप्लोमैटिक चैनल्स Chairperson of CPN Madhav Kumar Nepal has said that the collision between his party and the Nepali Congress would continue in other elections in the future as well. This comes as the two ruling parties have agreed to partner for the National Assembly elections stated to be held on January 26th. Chief Person of CPN United Socialist Party Madhav Kumar Nepal has said the coalition between his party and Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Diobas Nepali Congress would continue in other elections in the future as well. The two ruling parties have agreed to partner for the upcoming National Assembly election. 
Speaking at an event in Kathmandu on Wednesday, Madhav Kumar Nepal shared that the ruling coalition partners were discussing forming an electoral alliance in all upcoming elections. He said that his newly formed party was drawing new members from other political parties. The National Assembly election is scheduled to take place on January 26. Reports suggest and will be electing 19 of the 20 retiring Class 2 members for the Upper House of Parliament. The five-party ruling coalition has decided Nepali Congress will get six seats, while CPN Maoist Centre and CPN Unified Socialist Party will get five seats each. Similarly, Janata Samaj Party Party and Jana Morcha will get two and one seat respectively. Locals in northern India braved cold wave as snow and rains plummeted temperatures and brought life to standstill on Thursday. Several towns in northern Jammu and Kashmir territory witnessed heavy snow which led to blockage of national highways, where trucks stood in long queues for hours. And cities like Patna and capital New Delhi witnessed thick fog which blurred visibility for commuters. People in parts of northern and eastern India brave chilly weather and snow as the cold wave tightened its hold over the region on Thursday. Rains in Punch district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory brought down temperatures and posed challenges to the residents already battling a severe cold wave. Residents who work outdoors found some relief in hot tea and huddle around bonfires. और यहां पे पहाड़ों पे बहुत ज्यादा बर्फ है जी बहुत ठंड हो रही है लोगों ने गरम कपड़े काफी लगाए हैं बहुत ज्यादा ठंड है जी मीनवाइल नॉर्दर्न बनिहाल टाउन रिसीव्ड अ हैवी स्नोफॉल व्हिच ब्लॉक रोड्स फॉर आवर्स अंटिल दे वर क्लियर्ड बाय लोकल अथॉरिटीज ट्रक्स मोस्टली कैरिंग एसेंशियल गुड्स वर स्ट्रैंडेड इन द नॉर्दर्न उधमपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट एज अ जम्मू नेशनल हाईवे रिमेन क्लोज ड्यू टू इनसेसेंट रेन एंड स्नो व्हिच मेड इट डेंजरस फॉर ड्राइविंग बारिश आ रही है क्योंकि आगे भी रास्ता बहुत खराब है पत्थरे आ रहे हैं गाड़ियों का नुकसान हो रहा है इसीलिए यहां से कल ट्रैफिक की मूवमेंट रोकी गई है बराब सवा बारह से और हम कल से यहां खड़े वाइल द स्नो कॉज ट्रबल टू लोकल्स लिविंग इन द हिली एरियाज द इंडियन कैपिटल न्यू दिल्ली एंड ईस्टर्न पटना सिटी व कवर इन डेंस फॉक विच लेफ्ट पीपल स्ट्रगलिंग टू रीच द डेस्टिनेशन आम इट रिड्यूज विजिबिलिटी Snowfall in states like Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh has a direct impact on other northern states like Punjab, Haryana, Delhi and Uttar Pradesh. South Asia's winter are not as cold as other regions such as North America, but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in the open and do not have enough warm clothes and some even die. With the advent of the winter season, a large number of migratory birds have flocked to a famous bird sanctuary in Nasik in India's western Maharashtra state. Forest authorities say this year more than 30,000 birds, including flamingos and cranes, are foraging at the sanctuary, which is a wetland. With the advent of winters, a large number of migratory birds have flocked to Nandur Madmeshwar Bird Sanctuary a wetland in Nasik, an ancient holy city in India's western Maharashtrian state. The bird sanctuary harbors thousands of migratory birds every year. Migratory birds including flamingos, cranes, golden flowers, blue chicks are for aging at the bird sanctuary this year. The site attracts many tourists, bird watchers and photographers. यहाँ पे अपने यहाँ पे कुछ लोकल माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स है और अदर इंडिया अदर देन इंडिया बाहर से भी बहुत सारे पक्षी आते हैं जनरली सेबेरिया और रशिया का जो पार्ट है वहाँ से ज्यादा से ज्यादा बर्ड्स यहाँ पे आते हैं अदर माइग्रेटरी बर्ड्स फाउंड इन द सेंचुरी इंक्लूड वाइट स्टॉक ग्लॉसी एप्स स्पून बिल्स पिन टेल्स मलाट अमंग अदर्स वाइल द रेसिडेंट बर्ड्स इंक्लूड ब्लैक एप्स स्पॉट बिल लिटिल ग्रेप इग्रेट्स her own stock, kites and vultures among others. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.